Let's talk about brushes. Sometimes we take the tool we use for granted just because it's digital. I'll show you how a brush that works for you and your needs will make your job way easier, faster and more enjoyable. When we pick up our first graphic tablet or our first iPad, we often choose a random brush that we think will work and then wonder why we feel uncomfortable drawing or we feel something is off or unnatural. I've been there and I'm sure you did too or probably you're still at that beginner stage of figuring things out. In this video I'll show you my favorite brushes from sketching and line art to shading and rendering and I'll give you some tips on the brush studio parameters you can change and tweak to adjust them to your liking and hand pressure. Generally speaking, Procreate already has a nice, well-curated brush library in my opinion. Compared to other software, I found myself changing just a few of the parameters before actually creating my own brushes, that I'll show you in a second. I am a light-handed artist, I don't tend to push on the pen too much when I draw, but I also want my brush to be following my actual hand pressure as closely as possible. The Apple Pencil is already great at this, but for reference, I don't have pressure sensitivity set to a high amount. I don't want my brush sides to become randomly huge out of nowhere, when I'm sketching for example. You can customize this on the Apple Pencil tab, depending on your own personal needs. Obviously, you need to experiment with this once you get a hang of it, but you can play around with these parameters till you are satisfied with the pressure. So, quick recap. If you want to customize the performance of your brush to fit your needs, these are the tabs you need to be aware of in the brush studio. Dynamics, Apple Pencil and Properties. The Dynamics tab uh, allows you to control the brush size and opacity according to your stroke speed. I usually have this on default, but just give it a try. The Apple Pencil tab is for your pressure parameters and tilt parameters. And the Properties tab allows you to control the general brush behavior from max, minimum size to opacity. I feel like these are fundamentals as the tabs above are mostly for appearance, colors, shape and you can play around with those. I'm gonna swatch some of my favorite default brushes for you now. Let's move on to the brushes I use daily in all my artworks. I have two favorite brushes that I use for initial sketches and I made them for myself. First one is the sketch pencil and as the name says it's a textured pencil like brush that I created from a real Carandash pencil swatch to be as realistic as possible. This is actually my favorite traditional pencil. I don't like super grainy textures because I feel it makes my sketches way too messy. So as you can see, I used smooth paper to swatch the pencil on before scanning it. In the end it looks like an HP pencil pretty much and I'm very happy with how this turned out. I think it's great for brainstorming poses and characters in general. Second one and my main holy grail line art round brush. I use this one mainly for line art but I love it for sketching too. I just lower the streamline and stabilization level when I sketch. This is a very simple brush of course but I customized it over the years to be kind of a perfect match for my hand and my art style which is something you should try to do too. As I said, I like my brushes to follow my hand pressure movement, not the other way around, and this one works like a charm. You can see how consistent the pressure is and how it does precisely what my hand wants. This is why customizing the brushes, especially for sketching and line art, is crucial to have a good experience when drawing digitally. Because what works for me might not work for you. Opposite to me, you might be heavy handed, so you need to adjust your brush parameters to that, so you don't have a hard time achieving a tapered end, which is one of the issues I get many questions about. With time though, you'll also learn to understand your tools and modulate your hand pressure accordingly, building your quote unquote pressure skill. Moving on to my favorite brushes for shading, here comes the fun part because the choices really are infinite, depending on your liking, your art style and your general preference. If you enjoy more textured art styles, these brushes might not be your cup of tea, but I also feel this can be very versatile too. Let me show you. Starting easy from the evergreen soft brush. 
will need one. It can be used in lots of different cases and it always comes handy. But this one is a bit different. I made it so the edges get darker and sharper depending on your pressure and the ends are slightly tapered, just a little bit. This allows you to have variation alternating between soft and hard shadows or highlights. It still is very soft though, so I just use it for the initial shading placement. Up next, I have a variant of the previous brush I showed you. I call this one soft round. Same parameters pretty much, but this has sharper edges. I use this to intensify shaded parts, but mostly this is my favorite one to use as a blender. Some examples for blush, joints or fabric. This looks especially great on fabric because it makes the fold look realistic and you can achieve a lot of variation by modulating the pressure, even with the blender. Moving on, I have another staple brush in my set, the classic flat edge brush. This is a variation of the default flat brush already available on Procreate, which I really liked but I didn't enjoy the texture so I remade it from zero. Now it's smooth and the sides are a tiny bit softer. I use this as the final details of my shading, especially on the nose, ears and all the parts that require more dimension, since I don't like my shading to be soft all around. I also use this as a first shading on the air, it gives that separated strands look. This is perfect to do that, but it's obviously more of a stylistic brush and very subjective. Same concept as the flat brush, I also have it in a round shape and the principle is the same, but I use this one way less since I prefer the flat one. I made this one just in case and the opacity is a bit lower on this. One of the main use is to quickly make the iris of the eyes so it's perfectly round. Concluding this set with a little freckle effect brush I made and I use this not only to create freckles but also to give a very soft texture to the skin. I made the little specks so they aren't super sharp and the result is very natural and I really like how it looks even on my cartoony art style. Besides our main shading set, over the years I created a lot of special effect brushes just because they are fun to make and I enjoy creating weird, shiny, sparkly textures. So this is extra, but I'll show you a couple of my faves. This is the final touches brush and as the name says, I use it for some final highlight details on my drawings. For example, I like to use it on the inner corner of the eye, lips or metallic parts, etc. I have two versions of this. One is a classic single tone brush and this one is holographic, which is obviously my favorite. This brush is based on my liner one, but it's luminous and very very fun to use. Next one is the 2000 by the glitter, inspired by those glitter gels I used to slap on my skin <laughs> when I was a kid that smelled like vanilla. Getting off topic here, this is a glitter brush with a motion blur applied, so the resultant hair clothing is very pretty and kind of looks like bokeh. I actually made a bunch of these glitter brushes with different shapes, opacity and effects, and there's actually a tutorial up on my shorts on how I create a sparkly fabric effect, and you can check that out if you want. Let me know what your favorite brushes are in the comments below, I am curious about what you guys use. If you like the sets I showed you today, you can find everything on my coffee linked in the description box. Don't forget to subscribe and have a lovely day, take care, bye!